one of my favorite channels that I really like to watch. Hebert's Travels. That's their sticker. And we are going to do the 10 questionnaire on RV living. So this is... John Hebert. From John Hebert's Hebert. <laughs> Go ahead and promote your channel if you want to. Yeah, so uh, we have been putting up videos for a little over three years now. We've got like 400 or something. But all kinds of topics of, of RV living and boondocking and our, our solar installation and going all over the country and park reviews and product reviews and uh, three months of daily videos. <laughs> so just tons of stuff. Okay. It's been a uh, interesting story. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and start the 10 question. Okay, the first one I have is your favorite gadget or accessory in your RV that you like to play around with, I guess, or whatever. Can you explain it, that, what this, that is? This is a Ninja Foodie. It's open right now because we made dinner in it today. It was yummy, guys. It was awesome. Yeah, turn this thing around. But, um, yeah, I, I am not sponsored by them. But if anyone knows how it could be, I, I'd love to talk to you about that. But, yeah, this thing has made my life in cooking just easier. We got it for Christmas. Thanks, Mom. And <laughs> it's, uh cooking easy. I definitely want one. It's going to take away about five of my appliances, <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay, number two. Least favorite thing about your RV that you don't like? Hmm. Least favorite thing. Uh, the least favorite thing actually just kind of got fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been the wallpaper. Uh, you see behind me, the walls are painted this nice gray. Uh, it used to be this terrible yellowish blotchy wallpaper and uh, that's now gone but i'm not sure what my my new least favorite would be you like everything about your rv no, that's it's, awesome it's, it's a pretty nice rig okay what would you like to add to your rv or change to your rv if i could change anything i'd have an office slide out but you can't exactly just go build one into an existing rv <laughs> i know a lot of people would love to have that yeah Okay, number four. What's something you didn't expect when you got your first RV? Oh, something I didn't expect. Um, how difficult it would be to get warranty work. Because people equate RVs to vehicles, and they're used to the warranty process of the vehicle, where you know, your engine could blow up, and you take it back to Ford, and you've got your truck back in a week with a new engine in it, and RVs are just not like that. You, know, you could have a cabinet door break, and it's four months later before it's fixed. Amen. And people just don't know because no one talks about it. No one tells them. Yeah, I have that awning problem twice yeah. now. I'm still trying to deal with it. <laughs> okay, number five. What was the deciding factor when you chose your RV? Deciding factor was price. It had sat on the lot for a year, so it was down from eighty-eight to fifty-five thousand, and put it right into that we could get a loan for it range. And it's on our shortlist. Yes, yeah, it, it made the short list of makes and models that we were actually looking for. Uh, we had a pretty long list of must-haves and must-not-haves, and it, I think it hit almost everything on the list. Or, yeah. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Number six, what is your favorite destination to travel to? Oh, that's a tough one. We get asked that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might not even know about. That would be um, kind of cool. Like, Idaho is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, they've never even heard of it. Don't even know where it is on a map. In but Utah. Yes, oh, northern Utah, uh, which, mm -hmm. you know, up against <clears throat> Idaho. Uh, that, that area of the, of the Rockies is just astounding. It's Dead Man's Pass. My favorite in Idaho. It's just beautiful. Yes. Okay, number seven. Favorite thing to cook while you're traveling in an RV? Wait, do you mean like on a travel day or just in general? Just in general. You're sitting out and what do you want to do the, the most that you would love to cook? I mean, the one thing. Mm. And how do you do it? There you go. Let me well, get a little trip. <laughs> Teppanyaki is a good one, but so is just french fries or tater tots split what's the what is that called the te oh teppanyaki um you ever been to a japanese steakhouse they come out you know cook in front of you flip the shrimp yeah. and stuff well i can make it i just don't do the show oh i have shrimp on top of the rv and stuff uh, number eight what's your favorite thing about rv freedom 
freedom to Everybody. live free. Yep. It's it's the freedom to live our lives how we want to. You know, we we got sick of, of this societal expectations of you both go to your separate jobs and you never see each other. And that's just how it's supposed to be and you're just supposed to accept it. And if you can't accept it, here's some pills. Accept it. Yeah. And we just we, we couldn't do it. It was it was driving us crazy and driving us apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Number nine. What would you recommend to new RVers about buying an RV? About buying an RV. Um, here's a few pieces of advice. Um, if you're buying a brand new RV, uh, I would still get inspected. And uh, whatever the dealership calls an inspection or a PDI, I just kind of automatically don't trust it because it's in their best interest to say nothing is wrong. Uh, so the uh, NRVIA is an independent inspection body and you can hire an NRVIA certified RV inspector to come out and look at it and yeah they might charge you five or six hundred bucks but they'll give you a report that's this thick they go over every single system of the RV interior exterior and they look for all of the problems uh, that are on the unit they won't tell you yes or no don't buy it but you'll at least know what you're getting yourself into uh, the other thing is if you're not getting a third off you're not getting a deal because there's a really high markup on RVs people once again they equate RVs to vehicles vehicles have like no overhead RVs have huge overhead and uh, like I said with ours it was eight, marked down from 88 to 55 and they were still making a profit Wow. yeah, yeah. most people don't know that they just, they'll walk in and go that's a great RV here how, how much is it gonna take and wow. they just sign the check I didn't know that. Okay, I guess I'm on number 10. What is something you would tell new RVers about traveling the roads of the United States of America? Hmm. Traveling the roads of the United States of America. Uh, know the speed rating on your tires. Don't go faster unless you want blowouts. And most trailer tire speed rating is 62 miles an hour. Look it up. <laughs> Don't be trying to do 80. Yep, self, yep, self rescue tools, be able to change your own tire. If you don't know how, learn, practice. Um, you know, always carry a little cash on you. Those tolls will sneak up on you. Uh, always carry some change because half the toll booths out there aren't even manned. And a lot of the change machines are broken. We've run into that. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, don't travel past 5 p.m. because most services and businesses close. If you have a blowout, you, know, you break down, you need a welder, good luck finding someone at 8 o'clock at night. You'll pay $300 an hour if they're still open. So uh, we always try to plan our stop to be around 3 p.m. so that even if we do have a problem, we still have buffer time to stop before 5. And most travelers and most truckers are stopping around 5. So do you want to stop the same time everyone else is and fight for a spot? Or do you want to stop a few hours early and take your pick? Okay, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, we got to see Silver. We got to see Silver, and Silver was such a loving girl. Yeah, yeah, you are too. All right, all right, John. I appreciate your time for giving the ten. It was so nice meeting you. Yeah, it was and great. we are going to spend more time together. So y'all have a great night. Talk to you later.